there's a big new swing of, of uh, information or stuff that's coming out about what's known as artificial intelligence that we as the general consumer can start using. However, AI has been around for, for many, many years. Large organizations have been using it for a while, as well as, um, as, well as most people. A lot of people have been using um, AI, with, with the, most likely even without their, even their knowledge. As mm -hmm. an example, one of the things I, I strongly suggest that you do, if you're going to be doing anything on your laptop where you're writing content, um, if you're using either the uh, Chrome browser, like the one that, I'm, that you see right here in front of me, or if you're using the other one, which is, um, what is it called? Uh, the Microsoft one. Bing. Uh, the Microsoft Bing. Yeah, if you're, if you're using that one, you can get these things that are known as extensions. An extension is just an, is like a little added tool that you can have on your on your browser. If you're not familiar with extensions, what you want to do is go over here to the three uh, the three dots, go uh, go all the way down where it says more tools, and then where did it go? It used to be right here. Oh, the, I, excuse me, they, they moved it. So you go you scroll down to where they say extensions, and then manage extensions. And one tool that you definitely want to use is something known as Grammarly. Grammarly, if you if you were typing Grammarly in the search bar, you will see you will see it probably looks something like this. You 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 can install it because that's not what have it installed. Mine says remove, so you can go ahead and install it, and then you will turn it on. Now there are some settings that you will have to go through through the details when you set this up. If I remember correctly, when you first installed this extension, it's actually going to be in English, but in but in British English. So you'll they'll, it will, if you 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 will notice things like that. If you, uh, for example, if you're spelling the word theater, it's going to want to spell it as uh, as in in as a, a R E instead of E R. Mm -hmm. So so you you will notice those things. So definitely, if you're living in America. Uh, make sure you uh, that you use this. Now, Grammarly is like uh, using Microsoft Word, and then you're uh, actually um, where it shows that you got things that it, that you can uh, correct. Like you would do a right underline because it's misspelled, or your sentence con uh, uh, your your context and your sentences are incorrect. Now, for those of you that are not aware of this, Grammarly is AI. Your spell check in Microsoft Word is AI. This says your sentences is 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 is, is not showing something correctly, that's AI. It's looking at it's what you're writing, and then it's giving you that uh, that that update. That, uh, this is the way it should look like. So most so therefore most everybody that has worked on the computer in the last ten or so years has has been actually getting some experience with AI. With the release of Chat GPT, that just was AI on steroids that that the people in the general public can now use. And a lot of the stuff that we're going to be covering today is going to be with that chat GPT. So I'm going to go, if you have Grammarly, go ahead and turn it on, uh, activate it and turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, X off that window. And, then, and here was a search that I that I looked at right before the uh, right before this call. I asked Google, is Grammarly considered AI? And the result was uh, Grammarly's AI system. So the first two words, it says that it is AI. And it says it combines uh, machine learning with a variety of natural language uh, processing approaches. So I would, whenever you're writing your content and you have uh, Grammarly turned on, this is just going to help you in whatever you're writing. I don't care if it's a blog, an email uh, that you're doing through uh, Google or anything like that. It's, it's going to give you those suggestions. Oh. This is one tool that you can use for free uh, for, your, uh, for your own benefit. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and close this out. I'm going to open up a Word file real quick. So if I go into Google Chrome and I have Grammarly and I'm on LinkedIn, it'll spell check when I'm on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Facebook, LinkedIn, and everything. Anything that you're doing with your browser. Now, if you're using Microsoft Outlook that, uh, that I use, it may not uh, it may not work it unless I'm using the, the online version, or excuse me, the, uh, uh, the app version. So I will go ahead and 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 do a new a new email real quickly. I'm going to put this on the screen, and so right there, if I right mouse click it, I misspelled it. Is that this is so? This is not this is not Grammarly. This is just a regular Microsoft. 
Right. <laughs> We're showing that was that was misspelled. So, um, so anything that you're doing online, it will uh, it will uh, correct. So, as an example, I'm going to go and show the person that asked that answered this that asked this question uh, about that. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to LinkedIn, and let's say I'm going to start a post. So right there, it says DIN. It does not know what I'm doing. That, that green word there, that's Grammarly, right there. So, so it will give you a, uh, you know, say a suggestion like a green. You can either right mouse click it, or excuse me, you can just click on it, and it's going to uh, add it in. Or let's say this is an acronym that you have created, and you go and you right right mouse click on it, or just click on it. Again, you also add it to the dictionary. If this is something like somebody's name that was that's uniquely spelled, and it gives you the, it gives you this, you can actually have it just dismiss it. Got it. So those are those are your options. So uh, with uh, using something like Grammarly, and this was LinkedIn uh, uh, as a perfect example. I'm going to discard this. Now going back to our let's say our Microsoft Word file. Now, uh, when you use uh, AI, these things can be used in, in, a, in a wide assortment of different things. For an example, you, you saw you can use it on LinkedIn. We'll make the size 18 font or size 20 font. You can use it on LinkedIn, Facebook, <clears throat> um, Instagram. All right, so any of your social media that you're writing, it will, it will, uh, the Grammarly is going to help you with that. Yeah, that form of AI is going to help you with that. Whenever you're using, say, something like Chat GPT, this can be extremely helpful as you're building your business. As an example, uh, on Chat GPT, uh, and this will be on the free version, you can do, do things like uh, write a blog. You can write your entire blog for you. Now, you will definitely want to go back and, and make us, uh, some updates. Um, if you're writing a blog, one of the things that we talk about in our blog writing courses is that you should have at least one internal link on your blog and one external link on your blog. Chat GPT is not going to know that. So you may have to go and add sentences, add words, add whatever do so that you can start using those uh, you can start using those links in your blogs. However, the main the, the main concept of your blog can be written out in Chat GPT. You can also have this to write out your um, uh, your sales copy. Now, again, this uh, your sales copies may not be perfect, but it will at least start getting you uh, uh, close to where you where you want to be with that. You can also I've used it before to writing uh, titles and taglines. So if you're, uh, I've gone on there before and say, okay, I'll have a, a course on this subject. You know, what is a good what is a good title for this subject? And then it will give me a six, eight, ten word uh, a, a title. So again, the, the, and I've used that. I've done that once before when I was writing on a, a topic. I just, I just could not think of a title for that topic, and uh, and ChatGPT was able to get that for me. Hmm. You can also uh, you can have it write uh, some of your email campaigns. If you are creating uh, a, a autoresponders in your CRM and you want to say what kind of email campaigns should I be writing, you, you can actually start using this to get your, your different email campaigns. I've, I was uh, in, in preparation for this um, uh, for, for this class. You can also have it write out the different sections of your website. If you're going there, says, "Hey, I, I've got a topic that my, on my homepage. I'm going to have an about me or something about, let's say, Indian weddings or something along those lines." And you want something very, very brief. You're going to ask it to actually write out something that will go on just that one section of of one of your pages. Um, now, here's one that I uh, that I seen somebody uh, do just a few days ago. You, know, you can write out, it'll help you write out uh, future means meaning uh the, that's for the content hmm. Hmm. so you can say i i you know, we'll show you how to do this in, in in a few minutes but if you want to let's say you have a thing where you're doing a motivational quotes of the day you can have chat gbt write all those motivational quotes for you hmm. and i'll show you how to it, on the paid version 
uh, of, of Canva, how you can actually create all of those in, in less than five minutes. You can create maybe 50 of them in less than five minutes. So all of this, all of this stuff that you can get from a, a, a chat GBT. Yesterday, I, I was looking at it. You can also have it write out computer code. If you're a computer programmer and you're trying to program something in a, in a language, in a, in a particular um, uh, uh, computer language, the, the code can also be written out for you. People are using them now also to be your chatbots. If, and if y'all don't know what a chatbot is, a chatbot is essentially an AI component when somebody goes to a website and, and you're asking it, it questions. And then it gives you know, pre-constructed answers for you. Uh, you can have it help you with your landing pages. That's kind of like your, your sales copy. And also what I do is for my future content. Whenever I'm doing one of my trainings, I would sometimes go on to ChatGBT and ask it to give me uh, uh, topics that I could talk about for a, a one-hour course. And it would give me an outline of the entire uh, of the entire course. So this these can be very very helpful for the, those people that are that have coaching classes or that are wanting, that are trying to put together a future content. Uh, this could be a great way to get that started. Now there has been always been a, a lot a big discussion is you know is AI cheating? Now if you're in my opinion if, uh, if you're doing Google searches and you're doing research, ChatGPT Chat GPT is kind of like in my opinion a form of a virtual assistant that's helping you develop your content. So I mean so in, in that particular case, uh, I feel that you're saving time, uh, but by using the, in today's technology. And that's another thing I, I actually I also wanted to talk about is you, uh, for, for those of you that are just getting started in business or looking to grow your business, you, you need to learn how to use uh, the, any kind of new tool that comes available. For an example, uh, let's say if you were running a business and it was 1995 and there's this new thing coming out called the Internet. And you didn't embrace uh, and use the internet, you know, starting uh, fairly uh, fairly quickly. Um, you most likely went out of business because because people went online. So now in 2023, we have uh, uh, AI or a Chat GPT. So the thing is. I would suggest start to embrace it. It is something that's going to be used as a tool that you need, that you should be incorporating into your business somehow, somewhere, uh, and and as soon as possible. Now let's start looking at some of the examples of, of what I have created in ChatGPT. Um, so Russell, uh, I went ahead and, and and created a few of these uh, a few days ago. I'm going to go ahead and hit with this thing called a new chat. Now for those of you that don't have ChatGPT. What you're going to want to do is you want to go to this website known as chat.openai.com and now go ahead and create your free account. You can get a uh, you can have access to this for, uh, uh, for absolutely no cost to you. It's absolutely free. So this, this is what it's going to look like when you're trying to log in. Let me log out so that I can log in. So when you go to chat.openai.com, you're going to be you're going to land on this uh, on this screen. What you want to do is go ahead and hit the sign up button. It will take less than a minute to actually sign up. And then once you create your free account and you go back to the login screen, this is what you're going to see. Now I am a paid user on ChatGPT. Um, there is right now there's essentially three version uh, three versions of ChatGPT. The free account uses what they could known as uh, the uh, chat uh, 3.0. That's what the free account mm -hmm. uses. The paid account uses chat 3.5 and 4.0. So when you when you actually decide to go with the paid version, you will see what my exactly how my screen looks with the exception of the stuff on the on the left hand side. On the free version, you, you're going to see something slightly different. So I'm going to go and log in. It's asking for my email. It's asking for my password. And now and now I'm in. You uh, The free version, you're not going to see this 3.5 and, and 4 on top. You would, and you will see a, uh, some words here, here in the center, uh, basically just some su suggestions. 
But this is what the chat GPT site, for the most part, what it looks like. And essentially what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be putting in a message of some information of, of what you're trying to do. Now, one of the things I have learned very quickly is you want to be very, very specific in how you want the data to come to come back to you. For an example, if, that, if I was going to be writing a blog, and for an example, let me go to my website and, and I was going to write a blog. And let's go there right now. Okay, so I'm going to write a blog, uh, The Crucial Role of AI Adoption for Small Business Owners. <clears throat> this blog here was about 90, 95% uh, chat GBT. <clears throat> and essentially, uh, I, just, I, gave it a, I gave it a suggestion, and then it gave me, uh, for the most part, uh, this result. And as I mentioned earlier, I do need to put in uh, links uh, into different, so I, I added content, so I can have links uh, in my blog. This is going to uh, outside. This is going to the chat uh, uh, outside of the chat uh, GBT uh, sign up page, and this is also another blog that I wrote. So, th so therefore, I did have to add content. So, when you're writing something, again, you want to be very specific. If you're writing a blog, as an example, most blogs that uh, that you're going to be using, that you're going to be putting on your website, and possibly as a as a link on, say, LinkedIn, are going to be between 400 and 600 words. The average blog is on, is on average about 500 words. So if I was going to ask you to write a blog, I wouldn't just say write a blog. I would give it I would give it parameters. And so as an example, let's just say uh, write. Instead, if I was going to write a blog, say so write a 400-600 word blog on and Russell give me a topic that that would be interesting for you to write a blog on um using AI for hiring LinkedIn what using AI in hiring in a hurry a verb in in hiring h-i-r-i-n-g oh. um. What kind of job? Um, engineer. Okay, so I'm getting you more specific. I'm saying a mechanical engineer. So okay. I'm going to go and hit the green, the green button, and it will it will think for a second, and it will give you the title, and then because I said four to six hundred words, it's actually giving me what's the approximate words. That is often uh, uh, inaccurate. And I'm going to just scroll down. And therefore, I've got conclusion. So normally what I do is I'll go and get all the content that, that was just uh, generated. I will hit Control C for a copy. I'm going to go and open up a brand new Word file. I'm going to turn the styling off to no spacing. And so that I don't get all the backgrounds. If I just hit Control V, I'll get all that gir that gray background. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Control Z to undo what I just did, and then I'm going to paste it using this uh, keep text only uh, version. So now, according to this, this is 484 words long, including that approximately 60 words, and it's also including the title. So this is the, uh, this is a good link. Now, on this thing here, I have not even read this yet. I can actually have it regenerate the response, or I can uh, or I can keep with it, or I can say be more specific, be more uh, uh, liberal. I can say, uh, oh, hey, I could also say something like, and make it funny. Mm. So let's see what the uh, results are from that. It's writing it right now. How are we a mechanical engineer unleashing the AI comic relief? So right now, so it's now you're giving different parameters, so you can actually increase or improve the results on on that. Uh, and so introduction in the zany realm of mechanical engineering, find the perfect candidate could be like searching for a foreign unicorn riding a bicycle. <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. I'm riding a unicycle. Luckily, mm -hmm. AI. So you can make it however you want it to be. Uh, use. I saw somebody do this. Now, now it's um, so it's going to be writing it uh, again, and just scroll down to where I put my thing. 
uh, title, a, 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 a bookish tale unveiling the bard of AI and hiring mechanical. Uh, so you can see AI could be as funny as you want it to be. It could be more lighthearted. You could do, you could basically do whatever you two want, want with it. You don't always have to, um, uh, you always have to regenerate the, res the result or just continue playing around with it to see, like, you know, to make it uh, more perfect. But let's go ahead and just assume that the first one was fine since I already copy and pasted it over. Normally what I would do in something like this is I'll go out and take out all those uh, approximately 60 words. And it's, this is gonna be that blog. Now the blog could be on any website that you want it to be. It could be your WordPress website. It could be on blogger.com. It could be uh, in basically anywhere that you want it to be. So I'm going to, uh, as you can see, I'm taking out all these approximately because that doesn't need to be in, uh, in the blog itself. And it should be only like one or two more. And let's go on down a little bit further and for the conclusion. Normally what I would do at this point in, uh, in time now is I would, I'm going to go ahead and put these as, uh, as different headings. Now, the thing is you never want to make it a heading one because that's the title. So I always make these as like heading twos. So I'm just, I'm just going to put my, uh, my cursor anywhere inside there. And, there, and there's your heading two. Mm -hmm. So basically, then you go into your word skills to format it and make it look like it's yours. Uh, well, and then and then after this, you want to go in there. Yes, and, and definitely do that. So I, I'm, I just made the, the heading two, uh, style heading two. Now, normally what I would do is once I get done with, uh, with this uh, kind of formatting, is then I would because uh, I use WordPress. Then I would just upload these uh, these two pieces, the title and the and the content, uh, into WordPress, and then and then play around with it. That's where I would do the, my links. If you're doing this onto something like a Blogger or another kind of site, you may play around with it here, or you may play around with it with that host platform. That's going to be up to you as to which as to which one is better for you. So that's essentially how you would write a blog. Now you can do research on it as well. I had a call just a few days ago where I was talking to somebody that says he does not use Google anymore. Most of his stuff is all through uh, chat GPT. Now I, I did run a few examples of this uh, uh, yesterday as I was preparing for this event. Now for here's one that I wrote yesterday, you can see it was uh, yesterday. And the question was, write a movie synopsis for the original Star Wars movie using less than 200 words. So I gave it a parameter of the 200 words. So it could, it could, it could have given me a thousand dollar or a thousand word or 5,000 word uh, thing. So I gave that parameter and it says in a galaxy far, far away, the, the tyrannical galactic empire led by the ruthless Darth Vader reigns over star systems with an iron fist. So I just picked a, a random movie that most people po uh, probably have seen. And it gave me a, a synopsis that was uh, like a hundred and something, some odd words. I mean, I can, I can do the same thing here and just copy everything. Control C. Let's go to Microsoft Word. Do a new one. Styles. Turn it off. Control V. And this is 211 words. So, so the the Chat GPT, yeah, you can do just about anything that you want. Here's here's another example that I that, that I did yesterday, and I let me scroll up to the top. Write Fortran code for determining the date of the year. And Fortran is an old, much older language. Uh, and the result was actually, um, I said here, uh, sure, here's an example of Fortran code that determines the date of the year based on a given day number. And it went ahead and calculated this. And then and then it gave me this little, uh, this little caveat. In this code, the user is prompted to enter a date number between 1 and 365. The program then calculates the corresponding date of the year by um, uh, by iteratively determining the month and day based upon the number of remaining days. The code takes leap years into account when calculating the number of days in, uh, in February. Finally, the calculated date is, is displayed on the screen. And then I, um, and I, and then I say, uh, include leap years. And, and most of y'all don't know this. I learned this back in college because I used to write Fortran code. Mm -hmm. is that it, this one was a lot more extensive. And this updated version, the code starts with the year 1900 as a known leap year. It then checks the leap year in the 
if conditioned for the month of February using the standard leap year, leap year rule, which means that it's divisible by four, but not by 100 unless it's divisible by 400. <laughs> so for an example, the year 2000 was a leap year, but the year 2100, it's not a leap year. Which is that, because most people just think about that divisible by four, but there, there is even a, a stronger caveat that most people don't know about. And this mm -hmm. is what I wanted, and this is the, this is the code that I wanted. So right, so right there, I have the code for writing a Fortran code. Um, here is a, here's another one that I wrote recently. And it's going to say, uh, how can AIB use a small business owner, a coaching business? And it came, and it came out with another uh, uh, output. So those are some beautiful, beautiful things that you can use in, in the chat GPT. Now, again, you do want to uh, start, you, you do want to give it uh, parameters like I did in this in the Star Wars one where I said it had to be less than uh, in less than 200 words. It gave me 211. So it was close because mm -hmm. um, um, the first time I did this, it gave me like a 500 word synopsis. So you, you do want to give it those uh, parameters. Now here's something that uh, here I'm going to show you some other chat or excuse me some other AI uh, programs that you use. Now again I did do this all in the paid version, but you can do it yourself in, in the free version. The paid version actually uses more recent data. Well, what I was told, and uh, if you're using Chat GPT, the free version, which is the 3.0, not the not the 3.5 is that it's going to be looking at data or or, or or at information that was released in December 31st, 2021 and, and prior to that. Okay, I, I read that. Okay, <laughs> so if you're using chat 3.5 or 4.0, it will give you more recent data. So if you're asking for current events and something that happened in 2022 or something happened in 2023, then it's not going to, it's not going to give you that data. Ah. Now, there's also things that um, that it will it will give you incorrect data. So here is an example that I when I was speaking to a realtor, I said, "Right now, my, my dad uh, recently passed away. For the last uh, twenty or so plus years, he you know uh, owned he owned a a, a double wide a, a trailer, and I'm going to say, write a uh, real estate." property description for 8601 Fowler Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. And let's go to um, Google Maps. So I'm gonna get the, I wanna get the, uh, the zip code. So it's that, that that was my dad's house. He, he lived in a, he, he lived in a trailer uh, at the end of a of a of a street. Mm -hmm. so, so when realtors are putting their property description, they have a limited number of words. So I don't know what it is here where I live, but I'm going to say under 150 words. It's probably going to be in under 100 words. Let me actually make it even smaller. To 8601. This stunning property of offered a, a perfect blend of style and functionality, boasting three bedrooms. There's a two bedroom, one bath. So that was so that so this information here is in, is incorrect. This one features an open floor plan. Well, that does not look like an open floor plan. So you will see that uh, it, it, the chat, even with a 3.5 version, um, does have limitations. This is just getting general generalities about Pensacola, Florida. So you, you definitely want to make sure you check your data whenever you are, um, are, are, are doing something like this. So uh, it's not going to be good for everything. So just be aware. Um, now, the, the other things I want to show, uh, show you guys is that uh, I got a folder up here, is that you can also use uh, chat GPT or this is now called uh, AI that is known as Dolly, where you can actually create custom images. Now, Dolly does does cost. You have to buy credits, and I, I don't know how much it costs. Uh, how much you can, uh, you know, what each image is going to be. But if you're going to buy a credit for fifteen dollars, you can get one hundred and fifteen credits. So that's basically what a dime, uh, a dime a piece uh, uh, per credit. 
Now, if I were to go down, slide down a little bit, you'll start seeing some examples of uh, of, uh, of AI creating uh, images. So this is one right here is like an armchair in the shape of an avocado. Um, uh, or, or let me or just any of these things. High quality photo of a monkey astronaut, or a sea otter with a pearl uh, with a pearl a pearl earring by Johannes Vermeer. So you you can see you can start using uh, this stuff uh, in uh, in your business if you if you do something that's very creative, it might be worth the, the investment to go ahead and 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 try some of these. Another one that you could possibly use is nothing another one known as beautiful dot uh, AI. So you, you can start creating PowerPoint presentations with AI. So you, you, yeah, and you can watch this uh, and, start, and start a free trial to see if this is something that that you could actually use in your business. Uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm just going to start. I have no, I've not seen. So you can see right there, you can create these different uh, PowerPoint presentations to make your job a little bit easier. So if you're doing PowerPoint. This this could be another one that you could use. If you're looking at the pricing at the record time of this recording, we're looking at uh, the uh, the pro version is twelve dollars a month, paid on an annual basis. The team versions for collaborations is forty dollars uh, per per user per uh, per month, and then unlimited slides, AI content generation, powerful or pipeline import and export, and viewer analytics. So you can use a lot of this for uh, for relatively inexpensive pr uh, uh, prices. Now there are websites out there that are that are now starting to incorporate uh, AI into their own technologies. Now, Russell, I'm assuming, are you familiar with uh, with Canva? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I were to uh, come on onto Canva here, and uh, I, and I wanted to say, for an example, I want to create uh, some memes that I that I want to post daily. That's going to be posted on Instagram, maybe Facebook or LinkedIn. As an example, uh, let's go to uh, let's start a new chat and um, write. Uh, let's say thirty for the for thirty days in a month. Write thirty motivational quotes in under two sentences each for small business owners. So I'm giving it some criteria that the, motiva the motivational quotes for small business owners is one thing. I want to keep uh, each one short. So I'm saying under two sentences and I'm giving it to give me uh, 30 of them. Okay. I've not done this one before. So let's just see what this does. So we have our 30. So it wrote the quotes. It didn't find the quotes. Um, don't be afraid to take risks. Now, these could be, let, let me revise our search then. Okay, so I'm now going to say with the names of the person who said it. So I want to have that as part of the, as part of the thing. It may give me the same 30, or it may not. Right now, it stopped at 27. I can either regenerate or continue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the continue generating button. I'm glad this showed up because this does show up every once in a while. So I'm going to say continue with that. And, and there it is. It ends with the Thomas Jefferson quote. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to hit control C. And then this time what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to open up a Word file. I'm going to open up an Excel file. And hit control V. And there's, I got 30 different lines here. If I go all the way down, I got 30 different lines, uh, 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 lines there. Now, what I can do is at this time, I can, I believe it's under file. Actually, I forget how to do that. Um, 
I, what you want to do is you want to save this as a as a dot csv file you want to convert this to a dot csv file and then what you can do is you can either uh, keep these on the side here and and do it the, the the slow way or you could actually do this um on on canva uh, if, with a pro account with a with a paid account you can you can actually do this um as a uh, a, a lot more quickly. So I, I'm going to create what's called a, uh, an Instagram uh, post, a square. And in this particular case, um, this, since this is going to be motivational quotes, this is the one that I was looking at. Let's say uh, what I can do here under the apps is I can now use a, a, a thing known as a bulk create. And you know, once I save that file into um, uh, this Excel file into that CSV file, I can now import it into Canva, and then it will give me thirty. They will give me thirty memes. Well, well, yeah, well, one one meme uh, per quote. You may have to go in there and resize some things. Uh, if I were to before I before I uh, put it in there, I want to get this this image, this first image, to be exactly the way I want. So one of the things I, I could do is I can go back to what I have done is uh, with my uploads, I look for it, say one that says logo. I can put my logo on here. <laughs> and then and then uh, install those other ones uh, or install those at CSV. So it will it will create 30 of them. Each each center piece will be will be different. Um, and then you can you will have those thirty quotes. You save those. You save each one, and now you've got your thirty memes that you can post out on Instagram. You know, on one per day. Now, the manual way the manual way of doing this would be to uh, go inside here. Let's just get the first one. <laughs> Control C. Control A. Control V, so that one's a, a little bit of a bigger one. Let's zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. So the the black box, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and center it. Oops, center it. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can get this. Uh, so I can get the Swedish proverb in there. Go back to Excel. And through the dash, control C, control V, and you're done. And if you're doing this the manual way, the easiest thing to do in this particular case is to shrink that back down, hit the duplicate uh, page, and then go to the next one, go back to the Excel spreadsheet, go to number two, control C. Control A, Control V. Go back to the spreadsheet. Control C. Control A, Control V. Duplicate and just keep doing that manually for, uh, for each one. So this way, if you're looking to uh, create means, you don't have to go and, and create everything from scratch for each and single one. If you're using something like a chat GPT, you get all the con uh, all the content that you want, put it into the Excel spread uh, Excel program. If you're going the the the, the cost route uh, of of uh, or the pro route of Canva, you can incorporate them all at one time. Or if you're going to go the free route, you've got the content. All you have to do is a whole bunch of a copy and pasting. Now, if you're doing it the manual way, maybe I could change that image in the background. So I don't always have the same image all the time. I mean, so I, I can go back there, um, go to, let's say, uh, uploads. And I'm just going to pick a general Im uh, image. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm already on there. Let's say I'm going to use... That image there. Oops, not one. Control Z. Control Z again. And then I can uh, do what's called a. I don't know why with the. Okay. Well, you you would just change the background image and then make sure that it's, uh, that you move it all the way to the back so that you can change that that image. 
Um, I would probably suggest if you have a theme meme is to go ahead and keep it the same, just, just because that's part of what your company uh, uh, stuff looks like. So that's a, and that's another way that you can use chat GPT to start building your business without having to worry about uh, creating too much content. Uh, any questions so far? No, no. Now, have you have you you have you used it uh, heavily like like this, or uh, where you're you're creating content for blogs, or creating content for websites, or or systems, or not not yet. Nope, needed to learn more. Okay. Um, okay, so so the, again, those are different things that you can be using it for. I like using it because uh, I use it for mainly my blogs as well as when I'm creating content for a course. Because then it gives me the highlights of what I of what I'm going to be doing for that course, so I don't forget something. It's better than just trying to guess your way uh, through it. Now, if you're looking to create systems, you can use this as well. Uh, like uh, we talked about the AI and, and mechanical hiring when we, when we talked about the very first uh, topic there. I don't know if I still have the phone. There we go. So let's, let's look at the content for this uh, for this blog here. Re revolutionary hiring, the, the role of AI in selecting mechanical engineers. Today's fast-paced world, the demand for skilled mechanical engineers continues to store, uh, soar. As, com as uh, companies strive to assemble a top talent, to the traditional hiring process can prove uh, time-consuming and error-prone. So something like that, you, know, you can start... You can definitely be using that content there. Now, the thing is, whenever you're playing around with this, because uh, this stuff is so new, at least at the time of this recording, this stuff was so new, is actually start, you know, seeing, is, is doing some Google searches and start seeing what other uh, sources are out there because uh, AI is, is definitely uh, evolving and and uh, you know by the time you watch this video, this could this could be uh, some of this could be out of date. Absolutely. So you, you definitely want to stay abreast on Google as to uh, what are some new free AI tools coming coming out. What was the date you said that the free version stops in March of twenty twenty? Uh, de December thirty first, two thousand twenty one. The end of 21. Okay. Now, you will also see that, um, let's go ahead, and, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Canva a document. This, In this case, this is a presentation. I'm waiting for the left side to, uh, to come up. Is that, let me see down here. Because you, you can create your, uh, your, um, your uh, QR codes down here, so you don't have to wor uh, worry about that. Let me see here. So uh, I text the image. This is something I, I'm just starting to play around with, is uh, is to actually write something and have it create an image, kind of like the Dali. Um, so I'll, I'll put Russell on the spot uh, again here. What is a, a unique image that... Well, I could just create something if you... Uh, I have no idea what's going to come up with. <laughs> okay. And then. So this is the free version, because again, I do not have the, the paid version of Canva. And it's going to come up with usually like uh, four images. So if you said something like this one here, let's maximize it. So, I mean, so I would just say play around with these things. It's, 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 get those unique, uh, get those, uh, you, uh, those ideas out there. You can always say, uh, create again or start over or just do something new. But this is just, this is stuff that even Canva is, going to, is doing right now. Canva does have its own AI uh, stuff uh, on its website. So you will probably notice a lot, of, uh, a lot of sites that you are probably already on. They are starting to create their own AI version of, wh of whatever that website is doing. Now I don't want to get too much into that because that stuff is 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 changing by the moment, by the minute. 
Because, but you know, if, if somebody's watching this video a month after I've recorded this, there's a good chance that this will be outdated. So you, you definitely want to stay abreast as to what's coming out. So going back to that Google search, what are some new free tools that are free AI tools coming out in 2021? Uh, let's get past the sponsored ads. And Dolly, uh, Image Creator, you can have uh, cross access with Buzz starting to Dolly. And these are some of the other ones that are coming out. I have no idea what these are. But stay abreast on these uh, on these tools, and um, and and see which one works with you. Lumen Five is a video creator, a copywriter for Notion.ai, La La.ai, audio stem spl uh, splitter. So you got so much stuff that's out there uh, that's coming out. So some of these are going to be free, some of these are going to be paid. Got it. And um, that I mean. This, this course is, is a relatively short one. Now, um, I, I'll ask Russell if he, want, if he wants to do this. Have you have you uh, created your free account? I'm assuming you have? Yeah, I have the chat GPT free account. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Are you, you know, so I would say sometime today, sit down and play around with it and see what, you know, what, what it comes up with. If you're talking about your hiring uh, practices for a certain type of people, you know, write that out. Or say, well, you may, you may even ask, uh, uh, I'm going to continue with this one. Um, what are the top 10 questions a um, hiring manager should ask for a new mechanical. Okay, so let's uh, pick a number between one and seven. I'm going to say five. Like, So let's pick number five. And here it is right there. Have you ever faced a design failure or setback? How do you, uh, did you address it? The question helps assess the candidate's ability to learn from failure and their problem solving skills and uh, rectifying designing or, or design or technical uh, challenges. So it looks like what, uh, what this is doing is not only giving you the questions, and I've never done this before, it's not only giving you the questions, but it's also giving you the reason why you should be asking that question. Yeah, which is good because then it helps you answer a better question. Well, it's also like why you know, for the for the person that's doing this, why are they asking that question, and what can they glean from it? So yes, and then be able to write it better, and understand you know what you know what are they, what are they going to be looking for? Uh, I'm, I'm going to do number three because just cause, just because it's there on the screen. Can you describe a challenging project we worked on and how uh, you overcame obstacles? By asking this question, hiring managers can gauge the candidate's problem solving abilities, adaptability, and resilience in handling complex projects or situations. So again, start using this into your uh, into your business. If you've never used it before, or if you're scared of it, I would say kind of just you know get past that and just and then just again just start 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 playing around with it, and then you, you may start realizing like oh, this is something I can definitely use in my business. You know, you can create your systems, your processes. You can create all of this stuff using uh, even the free version of uh, ChatGPT. No, it's it's pretty amazing stuff. It's just uh, kind of gives me the creeps, but that's part of new technology. Well, um, let's ask another question. And this is going to be, the, and I've I've seen people ask this. If AI is going to take uh, to take us all out. Uh, I'm just going to read the conclusion. In conclusion, while AI will continue to advance and play an increasing prominent role in society, the notion of it uh, automatically taking over the world as portrayed in popular media is currently speculative and not supported by the capabilities of existing AI systems. So, if those of you, those of you that are term, Terminator fans, there is no Skynet. 